this at the start of the new year. Look back where you've been, look where you are, and where you're going. Paul tells these leaders, take heed to yourselves and to all the flock. That's the church. To all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made the overseers. They are overseers, they are bishops, but not in a way that they should be held up as better. They are among the church, just as a shepherd is among the flock. Just as Paul was among the church and among the leaders there. None of us are better than the other. The greatest in the kingdom is the servant of all. The way up in the kingdom is really the way down. Because Jesus said that he that would be greatest would be servant of all. It's a paradox the world doesn't understand. But Paul did understand it. And he tells them to first look to themselves, then to the church, and to oversee the church and to shepherd it as what it is. It's the church of God. It's not my church. It's not your church. It's the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood blood of his son that was the blood that he offered that was offered and that he accepted as a purchase payment for the church. How important is the church? God purchased it with his own blood. The blood of Jesus on the cross as it was taken um, through the beating and as it was poured out willingly on his behalf. It was the purchase price of our redemption. Ephesians 1 verse 7 in whom we have redemption in his blood even the forgiveness of sins Paul said for I know this now he's going to look to the future I know this that after my departure savage wolves will come in among you not sparing the flock also from among yourselves men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves Unfortunately, the church would find its apostasy, its falling away from the truth, starting with the leadership. There would be some who would be acting like leaders who would actually be wolves in sheep's clothing. They would go in among the flock instead of overseeing the flock and watching for their souls. They would be like savage wolves, not sparing the flock. In other words, dividing the church and scattering the church. Where is the church of Ephesus today? It no longer meets. It's gone in the ruins of time past. But they were able to serve faithfully while they were taking heed to themselves and overseeing the flock. Among the flock where the Holy Spirit had made them overseers. So he tells them what to do about this problem. Verse 31, he says, Therefore watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. There's the tears again. Paul was sincere. Paul was zealous. Paul was ardent. Paul wanted to save everyone and bring them to the knowledge of the truth. And so he did not cease to warn everyone night and day with tears. So now, brethren, he says, I'll tell you what you need to do. Verse 32, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. The answer to falling away from the truth is the truth. He says, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, the scriptures we have today in written form. They had inspired men at that time. Through the laying of the apostles' hands, they could inspire men uh, with the Holy Spirit, would inspire men to preach the truth. But now all of it's been written down in Scripture by these inspired men. And we can commend one another to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build us up. The more we know about God and his word, the more he is able to build us up as a church and to give us an inheritance that's heaven among all those who are sanctified. That means set apart. God has made us saints. He set us apart from the world 
so that we can be holy in the world and make a difference like salt and like light through our influence. Then he says about his own conduct in the past, I have coveted no one's silver or gold or apparel. Today you could look at a lot of modern day preachers on television and say they're in for the money. It's obvious. If you look at, if you take Joyce Meyer for one, she's, she is a female preacher on television. If you look at what she, where she lives and what she drives, you can tell us. It, it's nothing like what Paul said. She lives a completely different lifestyle than what Paul was describing here. What did he do instead of coveting other people's silver, gold, or apparel? He said, yes, you yourselves know that with these hands have provided for my necessities and for those who are with me. Paul not only preached night and day, warning night and day, he worked night and day with his own hands so that he would be able to meet his own necessities and have some left over for others who were with him. He says, I've shown you as an example. He says, I've shown you in every way by laboring like this that you must support the weak. The elders were not going back to the church to be served as the leaders. They were to lead by serving and they needed to work like Paul. Paul reminded them of something. He says, and remember the words of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. The world doesn't believe that verse. The world doesn't believe that it's more blessed to give than to receive. The world says, this is my one life. I only live once. I've got to get it. I've got to get it while I can. I'm number one. I want to have it my way. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than receive. So how did Paul do it? He was among the church with humility, serving the Lord Jesus Christ, warning them night and day, laboring with his own hands, serving as an example of how it's more blessed to give than to receive. Now he's through with his sermon. That's why he had them to come all the way from Ephesus to Miletus so they could hear that message. That's how important that message is. And so it says, verse 36, when he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all. How long has it been since you knelt down and prayed? How long has it been since you knelt down and prayed with somebody? Perhaps we need to follow Paul's example. There's something about kneeling in the physical kneeling the physical body that makes us feel vulnerable, submissive. And perhaps we need to go back to this. He knelt down, showing his humility, because he was in a humble position. And he prayed with them all. Verse 37, then they all wept. Why were they weeping? They wept freely and fell on Paul's neck and kissed him, sorrowing most of all for the words which he spoke, that they would see his face no more. They had seen Paul in his great example of Christ. He said, for me to live is Christ, to die is gain. And they had seen that. It was to be with Paul would to be, in a sense, to be with Christ. And they were going to miss him. And they were afraid, I'm sure, that they would see his face no more and they were weeping freely and the last part is and they accompanied him to the ship that's fellowship brethren we're not alone we're in this together I love the song that says blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love if you read the words of that song, it's a touching way to express the feelings that go from one another as we rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. We need to have the kind of fellowship that we can share the joy of our inheritance in the saints. 
But we also need to have the kind of fellowship that we can share with one another and sympathize and cheer. Even weep freely because of the fellowship that binds us together in Christian love. We're in this together. We are the church, the assembly of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to remember that we're in this, whether we're meeting together in a public assembly, we're still assembled as a church, even when we're apart from one another, because the Lord has us connected. And even though Paul would be away from them, and they would miss him, Paul would be in their hearts, and they would certainly be in Paul's hearts. Chapter 21 says it came to pass. That's the way the future is. It comes to pass. We don't know what 2020 will bring for us, but we know what we can do. We can follow the example of Paul. We can be among the church serving in all humility the Lord Jesus Christ with joy and with tears. And we can do this until our race is run. It may be that 2020 will be the year that your race is completed. If it is, you need to finish strong like Paul did. Your body can grow weaker and yet your inward man can be renewed day by day. That's a promise. Are you here this morning as a prodigal? What is a prodigal? A prodigal is someone who was faithful to the family who goes astray. We can be prodigals in two sense. We can be a prodigal in the sense that we we're a child of God by creation and we just leave God in rebellion. Most people are in that, that situation. But we could be a child born again of the water and the spirit and go away from God in a spiritual sense and need to come home. Either way, a sinner away from God is a prodigal. We're going to sing about the prodigal son coming home. It may be that you need to respond by coming to Jesus in faith, turning from your past sins and repentance. And confess that you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Be immersed into Jesus Christ by baptism, into his death. Be raised to walk in newness of life. And then you can live faithfully in your life, running your race, until it's finished. If we can encourage you through this song, please come as we stand and sing.